Hello everybody and welcome to another exciting oil painting video. Um, today is Sunday like usual and I'm starting another one. This is 11 by 14 on a bull dick black canvas panel. I'm going a little darker today with my um, initial wash here. Um, this is Payne's Gray, the Purple Lake, and um, Olive Green. So I've got that mixed in with my walnut elkin medium to get a real thin mixture that you see here. And it's got that real pretty light brownish kind of thing going on. I'm really kind of liking that uh, that mixture there. So I'm going to make sure I keep this in mind and remember it for next time. Um, wasn't sure what I was doing, as per usual. Sorry, I just hit the camera. I got a small area because of how it goes with my video. And every once in a while... I kind of hit it, so I apologize for that. No mountains today. Just a nice, kind of dark, not dark, um, like morbid dark. Um, dark, a little bit more just lack of light in this uh, painting. It's a little darker than I normally do. I don't have a lot of bright stuff in it. I'm not going to have a lot of bright flowers. It's going to be a little more subtle and a little more subdued. Um, I like the way it came out, but most of the colors I was used, I mean, the brightest color I used, other than titanium white, which I use sparingly, as you know, um, was lemon yellow, and that didn't have a huge uh, impact. And, you know, I'm feeling good, so for some reason I just didn't want to go as bright today. You know, everybody has a little moods once in a while. You know, I'm in a good mood, but the way this brown started, I wanted to kind of continue that that kind of mood <clears throat> excuse me i'm gonna put in the water a little early just so i have an idea where i'm at here because this whole composition kind of took me by surprise when i um <coughs> wow excuse me um the um whole composition took me by surprise when i started seeing that brown which i absolutely love you know, everybody wants to know how you mix colors and they mix this. Okay, Payne's Gray, Olive Green, and Purple Lake. They're all uh, Griffin Alkid uh, colors, oil colors from Windsor Newton. That is a beautiful brown. So I got to remember that for um, future paintings. And then really, if you look at it too, it's a little darker than yellow ochre, but not much. So you can actually use that to get rid of yellow ochre. You can even uh, use it in place of raw sienna in a lot of places. So mixing your colors is always the best. Okay, so my water I'm not going to be doing a lot with today, okay? That's cobalt blue mixed with that other mixture to give it that look. I'm going to put some reflections in um, toward the top body of water when I um, finish those trees. Because those are going to be my background trees, and then I'll have some in the foreground like normal. And then I'll put some reflections in. I'll put some water lines in with the palette knife, and I'm going to kind of leave it as is. So to a degree, we're also going uh, very simple today, too. We're not doing... The composition is not complicated. The colors are not complicated. You know, everything is just kind of a basic, very serene, very appealing um, oil painting of a landscape. Earlier today, my wife and I went to the uh, Morton Arboretum in Lyle, Illinois, it's beautiful today. It's a little chilly, just a hair chilly because of the wind. But it was like uh, 49 degrees, 50 degrees when we got there, but sunny. And we took about 40, 50 pictures of uh, a lot of the trees and grasses and things that are starting to kind of bloom and, you know, starting to look their way. So I'm going to use some of those. I'll show you in a couple of videos coming up. What I did was we went by Lake Marmo. So if anybody's... Uh, local for me that's uh, watching this video, uh, Lake Marmo is, um, I think it's the biggest accessible lake at the Morton Arboretum. Arbor Lake might be a little bigger, but uh, they got it fenced in for the last, I don't know, 10 years or so. So we can't really access that lake. But Lake Marmo is, and what's cool about it is they got the trail all the way around it that uh, we walked today. And I took a lot of pictures of the shorelines kind of the long way. And what I wanted to do with that is I cropped them already when we got back later this morning. And what I wanted to use those for 
is shoreline reference material for different bodies of water. So it's Lake Marmo is not a big lake at all, okay? I am a very bad swimmer and 58 years old, and I can probably swim across its widest point, you know, in 15, 20 minutes. So it's not, you know, a huge lake by no stretch. There's no big currents, nothing like that. But it does have kind of like an oval shape to it. And that oval shape really is nice for seeing the branches and the trunks and everything that lays next to the water, in the water, overhangs the water, and so on. And so that's what I did. I took a lot of pictures of the shorelines on either side to give myself a good reference. Because you look at here. I've got, if you count it, I've got one, two, three major shorelines that aren't the horizon line. And when you get different ideas of what you can put in the water, on the shoreline, and stuff like that, it gives you know, your paintings more variety. So anyways, that's what I was doing uh, this morning with uh, my wife, Laura. She was taking pictures of the flowers that were budding. The tulips are going crazy. And the uh, blue bonnets are going crazy. And there's a couple others that were really in full display today. So it was kind of nice. Okay, so here I am. Just tapping in the um, reflections. Now the thing of it is with reflections, you can do them a million different ways. I don't usually do mirrored reflections. I just like to put in, you know, the impression of. I am not a hyper-realistic painter. I am a, I don't know, semi-realistic, I, I guess, is good for me. I don't know that I'm impressionistic, but I'm not, definitely not, you know, hyper-realism by no stretch. So I'm somewhere in the middle, whatever that means. So I like to just... When I do reflections, and I don't do them a lot, rivers don't usually have a ton of reflections. They might have some darks here, but you're not going to make out shapes usually with moving water. So when I do have something like this that's going to be a little bit more, maybe not stagnant, but it's not a river per se, you want to put in reflections to make it look a little bit more realistic. So what I do is I just put in the top and the bottom. Right now I'm kind of blending the initial lay-in color with the lemon yellow that I put on so it's not so bright and right in your face. I'm going to add some raw sienna to it also to kind of dull it back a little bit, give the colors a little bit more variety. And then I'm just going to take my three-quarter inch bristle brush, which is actually a gesso brush, I'm just going to wipe down, stroke down where the water is on those reflections, wipe across, and then put in my water lines. And that's, you know, pretty good for a reflection then. Let's see. That should be coming up any time. I'm probably cleaning my brush now. Got to get that three... Actually, it's an inch and a half brush. It's not a three-quarter. I'm sorry. It's an inch and a half. Normally, I use the two-inch on anything above 11 by 14. And it doesn't really matter, but I just grab this one and the inch and a half works perfectly well. There we go. Now that doesn't look like much, but once I get the palette knife out and I start putting in the water lines, now all of a sudden it looks like water. And I am going to put a little bit of land. It'll be grassy, but it will be land. And I'm going to put that above the water line at the horizon and below the tree line. So it is going to look... Uh, really good when it's done but if you notice the dark theme to the painting even the colors that i put in that are bright i dulled down and like i said it's just a kind of theme and then the other thing is look at all that green in the water on the top part of the water there's two parts distinct parts a much bluer away from the trees so where the trees are it's going to be greener more trees and green and then further away it's going to be bluer because that'll be the reflection of the sky and um you know, little details like that really help bring paintings together. And there's that shoreline I was telling you about. And now I'm going to do all the different uh, land masses here and then get them ready. I'm going to do a lot of wildflowers like I normally do, but I'm not going to do, I'm not going to go crazy with them. The colors that uh, I'm using for the wildflowers, even the ones that are yellow are going to be, like I said, subdued a bit. 
Um, I didn't want to make this a bright painting, even though it looks bright at the moment with what I'm putting in. It's not going to stay that way. I'm actually going to put some grass that'll be Payne's Gray by itself on top of that. And it'll, like I said, you'll see as it goes. One of the difficulties so many beginner painters have, regardless of what the medium is, and I'm guessing drawing and, you know, pastels and stuff like that as well, is you have this awkward stage during the painting process. And there's a lot of times the painting itself overall won't look good until the end. So you have to kind of have confidence in your process and what you're doing in order to get past that awkward moment or stage, I should say, and then, uh, you know, carry on and see through it. So I put in the lemon yellow and then I raised those up for like little weeds and stuff like that. Now I'm adding Payne's Gray to them. Payne's Gray, as I've said before, is a very, very dark blue. And I love putting it with lemon yellow because you get these beautiful dark greens. And it looks so natural. And you see all that Payne's Gray. Right now I'm using straight Payne's Gray, but I'm using probably medium pressure to blend it with uh, underneath the wet colors of the lemon yellow and then the initial base color. So if you look at that landmass right in front of you, that actually has like four or five different color paints to make what we have there. So that is not a bad thing. Color mixing, blending, all of that, beautiful. That is Purple Lake. It's a color I'm, I bought just to see. I'm not happy with it overall, but it is a good color for flowers. Um, I thought it was going to have other uses, and it just didn't kind of work out. So basically, um, I've relegated that to flowers, and when that tube is gone, I'm probably not going to rebuy it. I'm probably going to stick with my Lizard and Crimson uh, for my red and uh, stay there because Permanent Lizard and Crimson is just an absolutely beautiful color. It's a versatile color. It's just you can do so much with it. There's my bluebells, blue bonnets, whatever you want to call them. I think they're absolutely beautiful. I took a bunch of pictures of them at the Arboretum today. They were, like I said, they were in full display. They were looking absolutely stunning. So I'm not going to put a ton more in. I've got the yellow that I'm putting in now for the different bushes and stuff like that to kind of get that uh, horizon line with the background kind of mixed in together and kind of settle it down. You know, I like my paintings to look, I don't know, I want them to look like they are from my imagination and, you know, people haven't been there on a regular basis and it's not some place that, you know, a vacation destination. I want it to look so rustic to where, you know, it's just like I said, nobody's been there before type of thing. And that's kind of what goes through my head when I do these paintings. I make up stuff in my head and, you know, this painting was so much fun. It started out with a pleasant surprise with the way that uh, color mix went. And I only hit that color by mistake. I put a couple of colors a little closer on my palette than normal and it dirtied the brush. Instead of cleaning it, I kind of just went with it and lo and behold, I get this gorgeous brown that I can use, you know, in the future for all kinds of things. And it was actually a great lay-in color for kind of getting my um, composition set up. Okay, we're starting to draw towards the end now. I'm going to add a little bit of titanium white. I added a little bit of titanium white, I should say, to that purple lake to brighten it up just a tear. The purple lake by itself was just too dark. And even though this has a little darkness to it, painting-wise, I uh, didn't want it to go that uh, crazy with the too dark. I'm putting in a little bit of Payne's Gray with the uh, fan brush there. And that was pretty much it, my friends. I hope everybody enjoyed this video. And if you did, please consider subscribing to it, giving it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, let me know. I have no problem taking uh, constructive criticism. I hope everybody has a great rest of your weekend and a great work week, and I'll see you next time.